What is up, everyone, and welcome back. If you want to hear how the man next to me helped us start a very well-known band by the name of Catastro and the honest truth of what life of a lead singer is like, then keep watching. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to the Weekly Intention, where we give you the insights to unlock your full potential. I am so excited to introduce today's guest to you, but before I do, I have one ask. If this helps you at all in any way, like it, share it, get it out there. I, you know, My ultimate goal for this show is to be a light for people and to help people out, and the best way that I can do that is by you sharing that so people can see it. So with that being said, let's get into it. The man next to me like I had mentioned, is the lead singer of Catastro, and I'm so excited to share some of his story with you today. They have just released their latest album, Soccer. They're going to be performing at Red Rocks on April 20th. They were supposed to be performing tomorrow. I know that got postponed. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> um, I'm going to be linking their band website and their Spotify below. Check them out. And Andy, thank you so much for being here, brother. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, man, this, this is the weekly intention, and what we do here is we talk a lot about people's lives. We talk about, you know, what they've gone through. You know, you obviously have a very interesting perspective being a lead singer of a band, yeah. and I just try to bring people in from all walks of life um, to just talk with them about their life and understand, you know, how we can help other people who are pursuing their dreams and become a better person. So yeah. I think the best way for us to kick this thing off and to start is to talk about early life. Um, you know, for every kid that has a dream out there, or even an adult that has a dream, I want to take this back to the beginning. Something that we talked about, you know, being the catalyst for all this was you getting in trouble in school. Yeah. Let's let, let's start it there. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of trouble. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of how I um that's kind of how I started writing music. Um, you know, I um every every just about every class. I was in, I was quickly removed. Um, so about seventh, eighth grade, um, I was put in this, like a resource room, you know, mm. where I had, a, I had this, th this was actually the cool part. I had this really hot girl walk me around um, if I needed to go to the bathroom, if I needed to get lunch. <laughs> and so everyone was like, man, he's, he's, he's the class count and he, he got kicked out of all, everything and that's his punishment. He just walks around with this girl all day, but, um, he must be the coolest kid. Yeah. In school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's kind of how I started messing around and I, I, I had so much time on my hands, um, that I just started writing raps, you know, about, about school and about like, you know, just what I was going through at that time. And then, um, you know, eventually I, I started taking it more seriously and started, you know, started recording and, um, but that's kind of how I got started, you know, just, and I had always, I had grown up listening to rap and hip hop. Um, so I always like was, was drawn to that more than anything. Um, but, um, yeah, that's how, that's how I got started, you know, just picked up, picked up the pen when I was bored and, and did it as kind of a joke and then realized I could kind of flow, you know, so started making music. You said something interesting to me back then at that time. You know, you said, like, obviously we had Mac Miller, Macklemore, Eminem, all these different white rappers now, but back then, like, yeah. nobody was doing that other than, like, Eminem. So people had made little comments to you, like, who do you think you are, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's that's crazy. That's that's not a thing anymore, you know? Like, if if you're a good rapper and your music's good, you're, you're, you're good, you know? You know, it's not white rappers aren't a thing anymore, I feel like. But back then, you know, it was, it was just Eminem. Um, yeah, so I was rapping, and and um, our uh, my friend Pat, who uh, eventually um, uh, was our manager for a little bit, good friend, um, his band was taken off, I want to say, like, junior year of high school, maybe, senior year of high school, around then. Um, they're local, too. They're called The Main. Um, anyways he was like, yo, like you're dope at rapping. And we, we had been recording just, you know, he had been recording, um, all my, like all my rap stuff. We, we'd go to his, we go to his crib record. And he was like, ah, you know, like my, my band's taken off and like, maybe you should start a band. And, um, what's that band's name? Gym class heroes. Remember them? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Take yeah. a look at my girlfriend. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I saw them. I saw them like way back in the day. He's, he's hardcore. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But, um, they were, um, they were taken off, so he was like, yeah, maybe maybe you mix, you know, the rap with the, the live music, the, the band thing. And I was like, cool. And and I totally agree because I was like, you know, what are the chances of me, like, being the next big white rapper? Yeah. It's 
very slim. Um, yeah, so that's how I started the band. I literally called I called everybody I knew who played an instrument. That's that's exactly how the band started. I was like, hey, I think you play guitar, right? And I called Tanner. Um, I had been good friends with Tanner Stravers. Um, he was the drummer, dude. So I called him, and then um, our other friend, our other friends, uh, Ryan and Kenny. They, um, they're not in the band anymore. They were, I think, they exited the band like a couple years after it started. But um, um, yeah, I literally just called everybody I knew who played an instrument, and that's how we formed Catastro. I think it's David Grohl that had said that's the beauty of music and starting a band is a bunch of people who are shitty at playing and they, <laughs> yeah. all, just, they all just get together <laughs> and they start a band. Yeah. And it's funny because Travers, um, he called me, he's like, are you serious? And I was like, I'm serious. So we started um, playing in his, um, he had like a band room mm-hmm. at his parents' house. Um, yeah, we would just get together, jam, and th- that's how it started. The most, I guess, organic way you could do it. <laughs> Call all your friends, get in a room and start start playing, you know? That, that's so awesome. So that was like high school time frame or like... Yeah. Yeah. Junior, I think in early senior year, maybe end of junior year, around there. Okay. So that was still in a time where it's like, okay, this is there in high school, like whatever. What happened right. once you graduated high school? You know, we talked about your parents being Colombian and... Yeah. My dad is Colombian. Did we talk about that? A little bit. Okay. I, I remember <laughs> you, before you're like, you're you bri- Colombian. I was like, how do you know that? You briefly, you bri- <laughs> I asked you, I said, I said, where'd Chavez come from? You're like, my parents. Are <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. I was like, Man, you really did your research. Yeah. I'm from, I'm not from Colombia. It's actually very false, but my dad is. Yeah. So what, what did they think? You know, um, did, did you go to college? I went to one class of college. So yes, I did go to college. <laughs> and then you're like, this is not, this is not for me. Uh, not yeah, no. I mean, school obviously wasn't ever for me, but yeah. um, yeah, I did one class with the bass player, the Ryan, mm-hmm. Ryan Weddle. Um, I've known him forever, literally forever. Our parents have um, known each other for like 30, 40 years, something like that. Maybe not that much. So, um, anyways, yeah, we, I went to one class with him at Mesa Community College. It was music business, I believe. Don't even know if I passed, but um, yeah, that's the only, um, that's the only class I went to. What, what did people have to say to you at, at that time? Because, you know, a lot of people who are starting, you know, a podcast, a band, whatever it might be, you know, when you say, I'm going to focus on this mm-hmm. versus focus on something else, you get a lot of the chirping and people saying, you know, get a real job. Why don't you focus on something that, you know, l- limiting, a lot of limiting talk from out, outside. R- were you faced with a lot of that from your parents, from other people as you were starting or did they have like full confidence in you from the, from the jump. I think, um, I know Tanner and Ryan kind of went to more college than me and, uh, Stravers, the drummer. Um, but my parents would like hint at it, you know, kind of like, Hey, like, why don't you take some classes or like, but they were never like, Hey, like you need to go to college. Like this band thing's not going to work, blah, blah, blah. You know, they've always been super supportive. Um, but yeah, there was, there wasn't too many people that were like, are you going to go to school? I think it was kind of, you could see that one coming. Like uh, this guy's probably not gonna. <laughs> this guy's probably not gonna go too much college, <laughs> regardless of what he does. <laughs> that's that's hilarious. Yeah, and that's good that you have supportive people in your life. What what would you say to somebody who's watching that might not have a good support system that wants to start in a band or start anything that they have a dream of, and t- people around them are just like, no, you shouldn't do that. Everyone's like trying to cripple them and stop them from from pursuing it. Yeah, I would say go for it. You know, what's what's the worst thing that can happen? It doesn't work. But I think what's even worse is, you know, maybe looking back and and if you don't do that one thing, you know, you're going to have more regret. I say, I was I would just say go for it, you know. Regret for your whole life. Yeah, yeah. You're always going to wonder, man, what if I did that? But if you just do it, what's the worst that can happen, you know? I, I agree. That's such a simple way to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I kind of already asked you, or I didn't ask because you answered this um, in regards to how you met your band. But, you know, your first album, from what I saw, was in 2011. Yeah, which one was that? Gentle Predator, right? Yeah, with the, with the peacock in the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were talking about albums before this. Um, there was one other one, The Wonderful Days. That was the OG, li- our first song we ever wrote together. It's called Sunrise. It's still Stravers' mom's favorite song. Yeah, yeah. Sunrise. Yeah, that's that's dope. <laughs> that's that's so cool. Yeah. Um, did you have any idea of what it could have been? when you had released Gentle Predator, were you thinking like, holy crap, this is something that we could actually make money from and do, you know, as a profession? Or were you still kind of in the mindset of like, not really sure what's going to happen? 
definitely when we made that, we were still in the mindset, I would say, of, you know, just this is what we do for fun. We get in a room, we play, you know, we jam together. Um, I think it didn't hit us until our first big tour we got. What I want to say we were 22, 23, maybe 24, somewhere around there. Um, but, yeah, that was our first time. Um, it was with the Dirty Heads, um, Pepper, and this band called Air. Wow. That's dope. Pepper yeah. and Dirty Heads were your first? Pepper and Dirty Heads, yeah. <laughs> oh. That was our f- Yeah, we got we got thrown into it. Um, That's incredible. In the, yeah, in the best way we could have. We went from, you know, like bars were the norm to we were playing amphitheaters. Um, so I want to ask you something specific about that because a lot of times, like, if you are approaching your dream or approaching something that you care about, yeah, you're thrown into something that you don't feel that you're capable of achieving or, like, you're like, hey, this is, like, a little bit above me. How did you guys really embrace that moment when you had that feeling of, like, wow, like, what do we do here almost? Yeah, I I don't think we ever got that feeling. It all kind of, that tour, like, was, like, a, it just happened really fast, you know? It wasn't, we were, like, holy shit, like, we're going to quit our jobs, and then we're going on tour with Dirty Heads. And we had known Dirty Heads. We had been playing with them for, like, four, you know, since our first, I think they gave us our first show, Um, I want to say. Yeah, so we were homies with them, so it all felt like, you know, just, like, just good, and it just happened just happened kind of fast. Um, we weren't like, okay, like f- we, we really should have been, but we, we partied hard. We like, you know, we were just having a good time. We were, we were, we weren't thinking about that really at that, at that first tour. Just so, embracing the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Pepper, they were like the homie, still all really good homies, but they were like one of the coolest bands to get your, our first tour with, you know, cause we were listening to them in high school and it was all, yeah, it was super dope. Um, but yeah, we never thought like, I, I, it just happened fast, you know, like we started touring and then it didn't happen um, until, you know, I want to say like two, three, four tours down the road. We're like, hey, like maybe we could actually do this and like, you know, make a living out of this. So just embrace the moment when you're like approaching something. Don't don't overthink it too much. Just kinda, yeah. Just kind of get into it. At least that's what we did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it seemed to work out. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love your confidence, too. I love how you don't like I can tell you don't really overthink things too much. Yeah. I'm I'm not that way. I have like a. An anxious mind, so I really have to like. Oh, talk. trust me, <laughs> I, I overthink things a lot, but I didn't overthink that one. <laughs> well, well, that's that's good. Yeah, um, I I love Red Rocks. I love going there and like just the energy there. It's when crazy. You go there and like in the mornings, you see people doing yoga and working mm-hmm. out and doing all this stuff, and it's just like incredible. Um, and there's been like a few moments in my life where I felt like this is so surreal and just like so thankful and so grateful for like the place that I'm in and just like something you've worked so hard at for so long and then like you're there. Yeah. Can you tell everyone like what does that feel like to perform at Red Rocks? Like in your body, like what do you feel like when you're singing and you're looking out to that crowd? Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It's the craziest spot I, I want to say that we've played. Um yeah, it's the one. It's the one spot where I kind of like, you know, looked around and was kind of just, I forgot what I was doing. You know, I d- d- I can't even remember what song we were playing. What I don't even remember the set list. I just remember like, wow, we're we're really playing Red Rocks, and you just it's just the view from the stage is crazy. You know, so that that is the one spot where you know I've been like, wow, we may not ever come back here because it's you know it's a it's a legendary spot, so you never know when you're gonna be asked to play Red Rocks again. Yeah, definitely. How, how how were you asked to play Red Rocks? How were how were you approached to do that? Um, that was part of the Dirty Heads tour, so that was our first tour. I want to say, yeah, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, that was part of the Dirty Heads tour. So it was with Dirty Heads, Pepper, and Air, and it, it's just a crazy like. I think it was the Dirty Heads' first time selling that place out to or playing. I I don't remember, but you can just feel like you know like everyone is all the bands are are nervous and it's just a whole different it's a whole different thing when you're when you're going up gearing up to play red rocks you know it's a special special place Uh, i feel like if there's a little bit of nerves that's good that means that you're doing something you're uncomfortable with and it's like wow yeah yeah that's awesome Mm -hmm. in terms of like your whole career i mean you guys have four hundred thousand listeners on spotify some of your songs have 17 million you know listens to them on you guys have had multiple solo tours nine albums you know meeting major artists like dirty heads iration like all these different like artists what moment has really stuck out to you 
you know, as far as the the best moment in your career? Ooh. Um, honestly, I want to say last year when we got invited to play, this is another uh, moment that kind of stood out to me where I was like, whoa, this is, this is dope. Um, when we got asked to play the Suns halftime show and it, it wasn't the, uh, it wasn't a home game. It was in an away game, but um, that actually worked out to our advantage, I think, because, you know, at the home games, everyone at halftime, they're going to get their beer, their popcorn, whatever. But this one was like an open or open seating, whatever. So yeah. people stayed. So it was it was a it was a sold out away game and it was the finals. So that was kind of a surreal moment, you know, like home team. You know, you see we saw our name all over the, the jumbotron and everything. So I would say that between that and Red Rocks are the two moments where I looked around and I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. The NBA Finals, the Suns going NBA off. NBA Finals, yeah. Four years ago, you walk in that stadium, crickets. Oh, half, man. Half open seats. <laughs> I love. <laughs> I like the ticket prices a lot better back then. Oh, man, yeah. But, um, I, j- I joke about that. Um, I had a buddy, Dustin, who had um, floor seats, and we used to go. I was his son's buddy. <laughs> and we used to go, and literally, I was like, dude, we're literally on the floor, and we haven't watched one. <laughs> we haven't watched a play. That's how bad we were. <laughs> Really, really bad. Yeah. Th- this isn't a sports podcast, but yeah, I, I, I think actually this could play good into a question about your band. Yeah. I think the reason the Suns are so good is because they have such a good chemistry together and they're yeah. truly like like teammates and friends, like all of them and they're friends and they feed off of each other's energy. Yeah. You know, you guys have been a band for a very long time and obviously we see what happens to bands that don't have good chemistry. How important has it been that these bandmates are people that you can trust and people that like you can share you know, just a common vision and a goal with. Yeah. I mean, it's huge, you know, like any one of our songs wouldn't be, wouldn't sound the way it does if one of us weren't there that day, you know? So yeah. like the chemistry is huge and it, it's just, it's dope that, you know, like we've, we've been doing this since 18, since we're 18, 19 years old and no one really knows what it's like to be, to, to live what you lived, you know, being that band and like, sleep in the in the van and walmart and just staying at weird people's houses after the show like nobody is like those those you know the band that your bandmates those are the only people who will ever relate to that so like it is it is cool that we're able to you know share that experience together and be able to sit in a room and, and make something that we think is is dope you know that's really cool that you say that it's so funny you think about you know accolades and achievements in life and people think the best you know, the top is the best part, but, you know, I would almost argue the struggles and the things that made you who you are and the things that give you perspective and I guess levels to reality are the things that matter most. Um, On that token, what's your best memory of going through something like that, sleeping in the van, something just grimy, like in, in the, in the thick of it. And it it, it could be anything actually. There's so (laughs) many, we've been so many weird places and done so many weird things. Um, I want to say though, do you know HR, uh, Bad Brains, like a le- legendary punk punk rock band? I'm not sure. Okay. Are, they, are, they, are they old? They're 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 older. Yeah. Okay. Definitely older. Um, but yeah, that tour was um interesting. We, they were asking us for like gas money. We were staying at like people's houses, and that that tour was probably the, where I was like, whoa, we are doing some weird shit right now. <laughs> But that's how that's how you that's how you have to do it, you know. Grind it out when when you have no money and you're trying to get to that next city. You'll sleep anywhere. You'll eat just about anything. Um, yeah, a lot of weird shit. But that that I could go deeper into that. But um, that tour for sure was where I was like, "What the hell are we doing?" <laughs> that's so, that's so weird. <laughs> you you know the band A Day to Remember, obviously. Yeah, they talk a lot about that in one of their albums, like sleeping in the van and like eating long John Silvers and just all the different shit that they were going through. Yeah. Like just making it through and grinding it through, like not even knowing if you have enough gas money to get to like the next city or like eating off the dollar menu. Did you guys have to do that a lot? Oh yeah, we did it all. Like we were living in California and we would, um, I remember we had a, our, our buddy Brian, he would bring over, um, cause we had no money for weed. So he would bring over like the shakiest, shittiest weed, but we would, we were, we were happy. You know, we had weed and then our buddy Butters um, would give us, I want to say either food stamps or <laughs> like old <laughs> groceries. 
<laughs> so yeah, we we did it all. Uh, anything we could do to keep the band going and survive, we did it for sure. For somebody that's listening that like is in that tough place if they're like just trying to make it work and they're not certain that it's going to work, how did you help your find yourself find certainty in those moments? Like how did you find a way to just like keep going even though you were dealing with all that, you know, shitty circumstances for lack of a better term? Um, honestly, I think, um, you just got to keep going because it, there's been, there's been multiple times. I think I can speak for the band too. Um, where we thought, all right, like maybe we're done. We don't have any shows. We don't have, you know, sometimes you sit in that room and you, you can sit there for days and weeks before you think of a cool idea. Um, yeah, we, we've, we've faced those time. We've faced those, you know, moments uh, plenty of times, but you know, we'll get that one good show and then you, you, you gain momentum off that. And then you guys are in a good spot. Then you write a few good songs and it's just, I would say, you, you know, you just got to keep doing it because if you obviously you can't give up cause then, then you're done. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of how we've, um, kept going, you know, it's just, we'll, we'll get a big show or we'll get a big, you know, big break, I guess you want to call it, but big show, big tour, big, whatever. And then we just feed off that take it in the studio, keep making good music. And then, yeah, we've just been, just keep grinding. That's all you can do. You know, when, when you, when you mentioned being in that room for a couple of weeks at a time and just not knowing what that's like, what, what is that creative process for? I mean, what is that creative process like? You're sitting like in a studio with your bandmates or what are you, what are you guys doing? Like when you're in that in between phase trying to figure it out? Um, so we used to like the early years of the band, we used just used to go into a band room, uh, studio room, whatever, um, and just plug our instruments in and, and go. Um, and we've written some of our best songs like that. Um, but you know that you, there, there's plenty of times where you can go for weeks and have like maybe one idea out of the, out of the few weeks. Um, now we kind of get in the studio and we kind of have more, a little more structure, you know, we'll put on something, think of melodies before we start actually putting the instruments down. Um, but yeah, it could, it could be frustrating, but, but as, as long as you just keep doing it, you're going to find that moment. And then, uh, you know, where every, every, everything's clicking, everything's sounding good. And, um, that's really the best feeling when you, when you hit that and you're looking around and everybody knows, you know, like, all right, we got something cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I was just going to ask you, I was thinking what, what inspires you the most? I know that's kind of like a canned question. So let me yeah. like t- <laughs> take you into it further. Yeah. You guys have d- been doing this for over 10 years now. Yeah. What continues to inspire you to write, to create, to think, and to be in this mode of living? That's a good question. Um, I think just every day, every day, every day life, you know, just shit, shit that you're going through. Um, the shit that you're listening to, you know, it all kind of bleeds through, through our music. Cause we're all listening to, to different stuff, you know? And I think that that's kind of cool. And that that's what kind of makes our band sound, you know, so unique is that everyone's coming from, from, from different musical backgrounds. But, um, yeah, I would just say everyday shit. Just if you're talking about what you're doing every day or what you're personally going through, you know, that's going to resonate the most with people. Perfect answer, perfect transition, because I wanted to talk, and this is my favorite part of the interview, by the way, the things that we're getting into, because I think this is going to be like the most real part, and I'm, I'm excited to ask you some of these questions, but yeah. um, we we talked about the uh, the song, She Don't Know, because I, mm. I was I was, ver- I was rapping that to you on the phone, and I was yeah. like, this is my favorite song, you said, that's my favorite song too, that's and it's said. because of a really tough breakup. How has music helped you? process and get through tough times like this how do you take a negative situation like that and make it into a positive experience that you can share with the world Mm -hmm. um yeah that's that is one of my favorite songs too if you don't know um i wrote that one on the freeway driving from arizona to california i used to make that drive a lot I've, i've actually written quite a few lyrics that way on that drive. Um, anyways, yeah, it was just as, you know, everyone can relate to a breakup. And I remember just, I remember that melody. We can start from the top. I remember I was close to you. And I was just like the feeling I got when I made that melody, I was like, God, this is so good. And the chick I was dating at the time, I was started singing it for her. She's like, that's one of your coolest ones. And it sounds just so cool here in the car. And I was like, yeah. And 
I, I remember after writing that song, I was like, you know, uh, it, that's w- that's the good, I guess, that came out of that shitty situation. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't, like, sit down and say, hey, I'm going to write a song about, um, you know, my ex-girlfriend or whatever. It's just the lyrics start kind of flowing out, and then I'm like, oh, that's what this is about. Um, but, yeah, in the end, it is cool that, you know, you can turn a shitty situation like that into a song that makes you feel good and makes a bunch of other people who are going through the same shit feel good, you know? So you're trying to connect with your audience in a way that is genuine, in a way that can help them through a situation that like almost inspires you in a sense as well. Yeah. And I think that is the most genuine thing is when it kind of just flows out and you don't really think about it until, you know, you're like maybe halfway done with the song and then you're like, okay, like I see where this is going. This is probably about that girl. or This is probably about that time. You know, when lyrics start coming through and you're like, oh, okay, I see where I see where the song's going now. Creativity is so interesting because even for this show, like I find myself like having to be in a space where I can like my office is like my space where I just sit there and I can think and nothing else is done in there. But like thinking of creative ideas and like and, and kind of doing that. And, and I could tell, by the way, I, I love that reel that you made this the slow version of, of She Don't Know or like. the Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I could tell you're like these drugs and got a hold of you. Yeah. Now. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's amazing. Do you have a spot that like is like your flow state space, like a a space where you guys create? Um, Yeah, we actually do have a studio. We've been working out of for like a year, year and a half or something. Um, It's in Tempe. Um, But yeah, that's our spot. Um, We wrote a good chunk of our last album, Sucker, there. Um, But me personally, I like to write lyrics. I write a lot of lyrics in the car. That's, I just feel, you know, I'm by myself. I'm, I have a lot of, a lot of good ideas I've had I've came, I'm just cruising, cruising in the car. Um, but yeah, we wrote a lot in the studio. I like writing in the studio. Um, but writing alone, there's like a different vibe you can catch, you know? Definitely. You're, th- you're thinking clearly you're by, you're by yourself. You're not influenced by other people's like, mm-hmm. it's a little more thoughts. pressure when you got the guys in there, you got whoever's in there, you know? Cause you know, if I don't, if I don't have any melodies or anything, then we don't really have a song. So I do feel that pressure when going in there, but um, that's why the car is cool or just cruising by yourself is just like some of my favorite lyrics or melodies have just have, have came that way. Um, I, I agree with you. Like there is a form of like when I'm feeling pressure to do something, even with these like videos, like making them like the, like the structure of writing them, my best thoughts are like when I'm by myself and I'm just like thinking like without pressure, mm-hmm. when I put pressure on myself, like it doesn't work out the same. I don't know yeah. for some reason, because it feels like I'm like doing it for somebody else versus doing it like for myself in, in a way. And I feel like that almost like inhibits it. Do you, f- do you feel the same way when you're writing lyrics? Like if you're thinking, what would somebody want to hear versus what am I truly feeling? Um, yeah, I used to, I used to write, so we used to, um, you know, they'd, they'd have the instrumentals and they'd give it to me and I'd go away and, um, you know, do my part. Think of all the lyrics, um, but the last couple years, it's kind of been a more collaborative effort um, on writing lyrics. Um, you know, because with the band, I'm speaking for everyone. You know, so sometimes it kind of stressed me out. Like if I would, you know, spent a week on this song, and who knows if they're even gonna like it. So, yeah. But I mean, for the most part, anytime I came in with a bunch of lyrics, they they, you know, those were the lyrics. But um, the last couple of years, we've kind of been writing together, which I love. I love having other writers um, or the band or whoever in the in the room just bouncing ideas off of each other. Um, that's super fun. And, you know, it just gets your mind thinking, you know, different in other places. Probably wouldn't if everyone else wasn't in the room. Um, I'm sorry, what were you saying? <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> no, you, you're good. The, the question was just like pressure of like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No authenticity. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I like the pressure too. Um, you know, when you get in the booth, it's your turn. Um, sometimes, for the most part, I can I can squeeze a good melody out. Um, and when it hits, it's you know every like I said, everybody knows when something good is happening, which is which is that feeling that 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 no one really can experience. You know, and that's that's the coolest part about making music. It's like you'll you'll go in with nothing. You'll have literally nothing and you'll come out with a full song that, you know, could last, that will last forever, you know? I'm going to make that a clip right there. What you <laughs> just said, that, yeah. that, that's awesome. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I just, I, I love, like, I can I can sense your why in doing this, and I can see why you've been so successful in doing that. Like, I feel like you're very all into this, and, like, you're doing it for the right reasons, which is which is awesome. Yeah. Um, For those of you that don't know, Scottsdale, Arizona is, like, very notorious for, like, clout chasing and kind of getting caught up in a scene, and, like, it's very easy to kind of get in that vibe and lose yourself a little bit. Um, yeah, it is. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot I could say on that. I feel like anybody who's moved to Scottsdale has had like a a, like a moment or time in in their life where they kind of got a little bit caught up in that. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, we are not doing that anymore. But um, here and there, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's touch and go. Yeah. Um, you know, speaking to somebody getting lost in themselves, like you, you had you had been humble and said, you know, we're not really at that point. But I've I've seen people lose themselves for far less than what you've accomplished. Mm -hmm. Um. What's the worst situation you've been in, girlfriend or otherwise, that was a result of, you know, either no, notoriety or ego or just like something that, you know, this, this life has brought you that you didn't necessarily want that was outside of the music? Um, as far as, what do you mean by that? Like a bad, bad breakup, like people, people using you, like anything where it's just like people kind of leech themselves onto you or people were kind of in your life or not. Good, not good reasons. I don't think that's ever, I mean, you'll, you'll get, I mean, occasionally like someone who wants to hang out with you maybe because they think you're cool. Um, <laughs> but then they find out really fast <laughs> that you're not. <laughs> um, but yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing too crazy. We're like, you know, like we don't have like a crazy amount of money or anything to where someone's used us for that or, um, so yeah, n nothing stands out honestly to as far as like, you know, a girl that's used us or like, n n no, what I'm saying is like no Drake stories where, you know, like yeah they save the sperm and the, and the hot sauce. Yeah, and yeah. The, yeah. We're not, we're not, no, we're, not no, we're not big nothing, like that. So nothing, we, nothing we, crazy like that. Nothing, nothing too crazy. No. You, you had talked about the process of she don't know. And you said that your girlfriend was actually <sighs> cheating on you while you went on tour yeah. with, with a friend of yours. Best friend. Best friend. Still is. Want to elaborate on that a little bit? Um, Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i gotta bring some realness yeah, in this. No. i want to get a little deep in some um yeah i mean i was it was one of those relationships you know where both 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 are doing bad um if you want to put it that way <laughs> um but yeah i was like i think it was our first back to the dirty has our first tour i remember the <laughs> we were all sitting there in the room uh the band like and the singer came in he's like what are you guys doing like my first tour i bring like 20 chicks like you guys are just sitting here with four of you get out there. <laughs> so <laughs> we um started doing that or uh, I did. Um but um yeah, that song she don't know is about I wrote that about that I think that tour my girl was cheating with my my friend. Um and I knew it was happening and then I eventually found out like 2 years later and wrote that song a couple months later I want to say. How did you find that out? Oh, well, I knew it, but you know she denied it and I was kind of doing my, my thing on tour. So we kind of just, you know, left it alone. And then I found out it was for sure true. And then it, a good song came out of it. You both were doing bad. That's, yeah, that's the definition of both doing yeah, bad. Yeah. So it, was, was, it was yeah. never really, it was never really healthy. It never, it never was healthy. No, but, um, yeah, that's what that, and I think sadly a lot of people can relate to that. Um, one of their homies <laughs> banging their chicks <laughs> or, yeah, but that's what, like I said, that's one of my favorite songs, and it's it's just real shit that happened to me at the time, and um, I think that's why that song resonates with a lot of people, you know, because they can kind of hear that it's just a, it's something I went through. It's just a true story. Definitely. I, I don't honestly know how many people can relate to that. I'm, I've am i never had that happen to me, I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hope I don't. I know my girlfriend now yeah. is not doing that. <laughs> right. But, um... um the reason I'm asking that is I'm, I'm I'm really just like thinking about like like ego and like ego being the driver for a lot of like people's decisions. And it seems like you're in a good place now with your career and like mm -hmm. with yourself. Um, are are you dating anybody right now? Uh, yeah, I am. I am dating a girl that lives in Dallas. Um, we met like two years ago at a, I think she came to a show, but mutual friends type thing. But yeah, we've been, we've been off and on ish. For about two years. Healthy? Do you feel like this is a, a uh, healthier place for the two of you? Um, we're getting there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, in, in terms of a relationship, I really feel like 
it's two people doing the work and want to do the work, just like the band. You know, you guys can trust each other and like you're both going towards that like good thing. Mm -hmm. And like with my girlfriend, I can trust we're both trying to go to like the same place, this good place. And I mean, that makes like a really great team. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think you need, I think you need someone cheering you on, supporting you when whatever you're doing. It's definitely important. I don't, I don't think I would be where I am in life if I didn't have people, you know, supporting you. Mm -hmm. Me, other than your band, who's been your biggest support, you know, system or who's been, who's believed in you the most other than yourself and your band? Definitely my parents, I would have to say, um, you know, cause there's, they've just always had my back and they still always, you know, if I, if I were to ever need something, I, I could always count on my parents. Um, but I would say the parents and obviously my, my band, you know, like there's been tons of times, tons of times where, you know, they've had to deal with um, me, you know, and just, um, you know, being on the road and you're really close to someone for a long time and you, you can all get irritated with each other, but they've put up with a lot of bullshit that I've, that I've done and they've always had my back and they still do have my back, you know? Um, so I would say if not the band, um, my parents for sure, my family, my sisters, they, they all come to the shows and decked out in their catastrophe gear. They're the number one the number one groupies. <laughs> That's incredible, bro. Yeah. That makes me so happy that they support you. That I'm sure it feels amazing for you. Yeah, no, it's awesome. And every big show we play here, um, I always shut my mom or my dad out, and everyone, go everyone goes wild. Like, wow, his parents, and they're up there in the, in the back or wherever they're at. I love that, dude. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure they're really proud of you. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome to have to have them, um, you know, so supportive of me and the band. We, you just mentioned a good point in regards to the band putting up with a lot of your crap and dealing with that. You know, we talked a little bit about addiction mm -hmm. and how, how addiction almost broke your band apart. Um, yeah. How did addiction start for you? First, let's, let's just go there. I mean, you're in a band. I'm sure there's a lot going on. That's, mm -hmm. that's a tough thing for somebody to go through. And a lot of people can go through something like that, you know, pretty quickly in a situation like yours. How, how did that kind of start for you? Um, honestly... Since I was like the first time I drank, I, you know, and it, I, I mentioned to you, it's, it's not like I'm waking up drinking. Mm. Um, but you know, for the, for a while and still, you know, I still struggle with it. Um, you know, when I drink, I go hard, you know? Um, so I, I don't know if it started at a young age, but I've always been, you know, there's Andy, the dude who's hammered. Um, <laughs> but as far as, um, the addiction on what kind of broke the band up almost. Um, it started on a winter tour and I had just, you know, taken um, uh, Xanax actually to, if you want to be specific, um, to sleep. And, you know, I didn't know anything about it. Didn't know it was addictive. Didn't, you know, to me it was just something to sleep, help sleep. And um, yeah, I started taking that heavy on a tour and, it was the first, I think it was the first time where, you know, they were like, whoa, what the hell, what's going on here? And, you know, I was like having to get carried off stage, shit like that, you know? And so I think that's when it, it kind of started. It was that tour. Um, and like I said, it, that's, I put them through a lot of shit that tour, you know, having to, having to deal with the drunk dude on, on Xanax, um, every night. Um, but I would say that's when it started, and um, yeah, that was that was when it started. What I'm sure there's a lot in between. We don't have to dive too much into yeah, like yeah. all those details. But what what brought you out of it? Like a lot of people listening might be in a low place right now. It might not be your form of addiction. It might be something just like terrible that they feel stuck in, and they're not acting themselves. Was it the love of music? Was it the respect for the brand? What brought you back to a good place? Um. I would say, yeah, of course, the band, um, the band, you know, my family, my friends, you know, nobody wants to see you. Nobody wants to see you like that, you know, when you're when you're so out of it um, and not your not yourself because of a, a drug, you know. Um, but yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what always keeps me, you know, all right, I got to I got to get I got to put myself in check, you know, because you got you got the band who's who's relying on you. Um, you have your family, you know, my family, um, is a huge part, you know, of why, um, you know, I'm still able to do what I, you know, 
able to do what we do or you know what I mean? They've helped, they've helped me through a lot. Um, yeah. So I guess it's just family, friends. Um, you know, you don't want to hurt the ones who, who have your back more than anyone, you know? So I guess that's, that's what kind of, that's what kind of always brings me out of it, you know, is, um, and obviously the music, you know, you can't, pre- can't perform at a high level if you're, if you're doing that, that shit every day, every night. You have bigger reasons than yourself. Right, right. And obviously yourself. You got to want to do it for yourself. Um, and, you know, and I still, I, I, I still struggle with it, you know, but, um, yeah, you got to want to do it yourself and, you know, you'll notice when you, when you do it, when you take breaks from it, you'll, you feel really good. You're proud of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So mainly yourself and obviously you you don't want to let your friends, you don't want to let your friends, your band, um, your family down, you know? I love that dude. That's a great answer. Yeah. I I think that'll resonate with a lot of people. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, on the other side of ego, we had had a brief conversation about getting a real job and how you said, you know, screw this. I'm a singer. Like I don't need to work any other jobs, but Mm -hmm. you talked about how, having like a side hustle or a side something uh, actually will help you push forward in the music. Why did you feel that way before? Like, I guess from an ego sense and and why do you feel differently now about Um, being willing to do that? I think you just gotta, um, honestly, for the longest time, like I said, I just, I was the singer dude. I was, and uh, and I obviously, I, I think that's what people still, you know, see me as which is dope um but i think just i think when i was like 30 maybe 29 20 whatever is kind of when i was like all right we're not going to be like the next um red hot chili peppers or someone huge um which we still can be but um yeah i think i was just like you know whatever you got to do to to survive and live then then do it you know what i mean so yeah Easy enough. Yeah. <laughs> S- simple explanation. Yeah. Um, you're really humble too, which I, I appreciate. Thank you. Yeah. This this has been awesome, brother. I really appreciate everything, yeah. and I hope my questions were insightful. I try to prepare as much as I can and ask you not not dumbass questions. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> They're great. Thank you for having me. Um, so you know that this is a weekly intention. So what is one thing that you could share with somebody, either personal or in your career, that you know somebody could – learn on their journey or something that you could share with somebody that you've learned about yourself that has just helped you, you know, be a better person or get to this point in your life. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I, I'm still learning. Um, but I would say, um, just try to be, um, as much in the moment as you can, you know, I know it's easier said than done, but, um, try to worry less, you know, um, and that goes back to, you know, like, what are you going to, what are you going to do if someone tells you like, Oh, you're going to be in a band. You're going to do this. You just got to go for it, you know, because your window is short. I love that brother. Thank you so much for sharing that with me. Um, yeah, I guess in closing, thank you so much everyone for listening. This has been incredibly awesome. I appreciate Andy being here. It's been a true pleasure. Make sure to like this video, share it, subscribe to my channel, all that good stuff. Make sure to check out Catastro on Spotify, YouTube, Instagram. I'm going to link their stuff in this video so you can do that. And thank you so much, brother. Yeah, this, thanks this, for having this me, dude. This has been incredible. Yeah, thank you, man. Awesome. Until next time, this is Michael and Andy with the Weekly Intention. Weekly Intention. Catch you later.